Hi, today we are going to see on a very important topic about the safety and security issues in a hospitality industry. Safeguarding of assets is a fundamental requirement for all businesses. The job becomes all the more demanding in the hospitality industry as all residential establishments, be it a 20 room company guest house or a 200 room business hotel, need to provide people, guests, and staff a sense of security, that is, a relaxed state of mind and absence of fear. Creating such a secure environment is a major concern for all hotel managements as it is directly related to the increase or decrease of customers. The hotel has to ensure that the guests, staff and the hotel itself is safe. After successful completion of the module, you will be able to identify the assets of the hotel, know about the threats to identify property, identify the underlying problems regarding safety and security of the hotel, list the steps to be taken to prevent theft of the property, list the steps to prevent occupational hazards. Now let us understand what is safety and what is security. Safety refers to the actual conditions in the work environment. Security refers to the prevention of theft, fire and other emergencies. Security has always been a concern for hotels worldwide. Hence, unsafe work and living environment causes insurance and liability concerns, expensive medical costs, legal problems such as fines and lawsuits, decreased productivity, low performance, decreased and negative employee morale. Under the safety of employees, let us now see on the occupational hazards and accidents in workplace. The personnel working in housekeeping department will have a very physically demanding job. They are supposed to be on their feet for the entire shift of 8 hours in a day during which they have to perform various tasks that are demanding for the body. The most important tasks such as too much of bodily motions, awkward positions and physical overload create strain on the neck, shoulders, limbs and back. Let us now look into some of the motions or positions which bring about strain during the day's work. For example, the public area personnel have to walk for miles for sweeping and mopping all through the hotel. The room attendants have to kneel, twist and stoop to pick garbage from the floor, to clean the bathtubs and water closets, to get clean linen from bottom shelves of the maid's car, to tuck in corners of the bed sheets in a guest room and to clean stubborn stains from floors and staircases. Pushing becomes another major task of the personnel cleaning the rooms, like pushing the maid's car, vacuum cleaner and trolleys to different rooms for cleaning. Gardeners have to squat for long hours while preparing flower beds and planting seeds in the gardens. Gardeners also have to lift potted plants and replace in different places which again involves a lot of bending and lifting. Linen keepers will have to stretch to get linen and uniforms from higher shelves. Housemen have to lift heavy furniture and carpets to clean or rearrange them. And the list goes on. The above examples are only just few situations when the body is under pressure. There are so many other situations which are truly challenging for these workers. Statistics shows that a housekeeper changes body position every 3 seconds while preparing a room. If we assume that the average cleaning time for a room is 40 minutes and he or she does 16 rooms in a shift, he would end up doing 8000 different postures every shift. It can be classified as heavy to very heavy work because the energy required is approximately 4 kilocalories per minute. So, how do we reduce the physical stress on the housekeeping personnel? Let us now see what can be done by the management to reduce the physical stress. Purchasing of lighter equipment. Lightness of equipment should be one of the criteria while purchasing equipment. All heavy equipment and rack in linen and uniform rooms which cannot be moved must have wheels. Portability helps to great extent in a daily work. Next is motorized equipment. Modular, lightweight bathroom scrubbers, 
and vacuum cleaners can help in easier cleaning and saves time. Stooping, crouching and kneeling can be reduced by using mops and brooms having long handles. This helps to prevent musculoskeletal injuries immediately and in later years. Modern detergents helps to clean stains and spots with just a swipe and helps to eliminate or minimize tedious scrubbing. Job rotation. Job rotation in a day helps to prevent permanent injuries. It requires workers to move to different tasks to allow muscles already stressed to rest. Room attendants could perform linen exchange duties or procure supplies from the stores. Supervisors can be rotated from floors to desk control operations and night supervisors can be shifted to day shifts. Job enlargement. This is a credible alternative where the task is broadened to give balanced exposure to jobs and prevent stress. For example, the room attendant can be made to do some administrative duties like cleaning equipment, issue of equipment from stores, etc. Teamwork. It is a wonderful idea where teams can play their work and help each other in a coordinated way. But education and training should be an ongoing agenda to get updated on all these issues. And the training has to target on developing good and improved working habits. Next is on accidents. Due to the nature of work performed by the housekeeping staff, they may be exposed to many dangerous and unsafe conditions or hazards if they are not careful. Some of the hazards may include faulty equipment, slippery floors and spills which are not mopped up, non-adherence to instructions outlined in the material safety data sheet for the use of cleaning chemicals, worn out electrical insulation or fittings, inadequate lighting, unsatisfactory hygiene and sanitation standards and incorrect postures. These are just some of the hazards. Accidents may result from a number of causes like physical, psychological or environmental leading to falls, cuts, shocks, burns, collision at work and many more. Accidents can be classified into four main categories. Accidents from structural inadequacies, improper placement and installation of equipment in space, improper working habits and nature and behavior of people at work. Let us look into some examples for each category. Accidents from structural inadequacies. Blind corners or cross traffic aid could lead to collision. Uneven floors may lead to tripping and falling. Floor coverings which are not properly fixed again leads to tripping of the person. Too smooth or shiny floors leads to slipping and falling. If the given space for work is too small, it may lead to overcrowding, noise and confusion which may lead to physical and mental stress. Swinging doors or doors opening into passageways, glass panels which are not visible leads to collision. Positioning of switches either too high or too low leads to unnecessary stretching or bending causing muscular or spinal injuries. Injuries due to glare caused by inadequate lighting and improper ventilation may cause exhaustion and fatigue. Thus, it is very important to plan the structures of the establishment with safety in mind. The second cause is accidents from improper placement of equipment in space. Positioning the equipment in a manner that will optimize its use as well as increase the safety of the personnel is the responsibility of the management. Very often, attention to placement is neglected and is installed where it fits the best. Now, let us look into some of the placement of equipment that can become a hazard at work. Mobile equipments like trolleys placed in traffic lanes will cause congestion and collision. Furniture with exposed sharp edges increases the chances of accidents. Improperly placed firefighting and safety equipments can delay in reacting to emergency situations. Electrical switches placed near the sinks are dangerous arrangements. It can lead to people touch the switches with wet hands and suffer shocks. The third cause is accidents from improper working habits. Some common work habits which can be identified in catering establishments 
as safety hazards are keeping the electrical switches on while cleaning the electrical equipments can lead to shock. Not wiping the spillages immediately will result in dangerous slips and falls. Changing the fused bulb while it is still hot can burn the hand. Thus, proper work habits are established only when a sense of identity is established with the workplace. The fourth cause is accidents due to nature and behavior of people at work. Certain people are more prone to accidents than others because their nature and behavior makes them so. The behaviors which increase the potential for accidents at work are carelessness, excitability, fear, anxiety, ill health, lack of interest in work, lack of concentration and forgetfulness. Therefore, to reduce the safety risk, all employees should be aware of the potential safety hazards. The management can ensure safety of employees by following the three E's of safety. They are safety education, safety engineering and safety rules enforcement. Let us see each E in detail now. First one is safety education. Safety programs and policies can only be effective if staffs are trained to think and act safely at work. The best tune to start educating employees on safety is during the induction into the establishment so that they are well versed in safety rules and policies of the establishment before they start their job. The following should be ensured during training. Teaching safe methods with particular emphasis on areas of potential danger and how these can be guarded against. Demonstrating the use of safety equipment installed in the establishment and the location and use of first aid materials. Including in people the ability to recognize the signs of hazards around them. Teaching them the legal implications of non-adherence to safety procedures. The second E of safety is safety engineering. This involves building in of safety features into the structure of the establishment that is in the equipment, furniture and fitting and its proper arrangement within the available space. While purchasing the equipment also, the safety in design should be ensured. The third E of safety is safety rules enforcement. If rules are not implemented or enforced, it cannot be effective. It is not enough to know about safety themes and procedures, but it is more important to motivate the staff to put the knowledge gained into practice. This does not come easily to all employees and therefore needs to be enforced by rule and practice. Though the safety procedure looks complicated or a tedious job to put safety into practice, lack of it can lead to heavy loss for the establishment. Apart from the cost of repairing the damaged property or replacing the equipment, there are costs of medical expenses of employees hurt in the accidents, man hours in the production will be lost, plus excessive wages has to be paid to the staff. Sometimes legal costs can ruin an establishment. The most damaging of all is the loss of reputation which can never be recovered as lack of safety is always associated with inefficiency. Housekeepers' responsibilities towards safety. The housekeeper has the largest workforce in the hotel. It is therefore imperative for her to ensure safe conditions and practice in the department. Let me list out some of the safety procedures that a housekeeper has to practice. Preparing a safety manual that is read and understood at the time of induction of new employees. Pasting safety rules on walls at strategic points in the work areas. Reinforcing safety rules every day in the daily briefings. Ensuring that all equipment bought have the ISI stamp of safety and reliability. Organizing continuous safety training involving experts like equipment manufacturers, occupational safety department of the government, fire safety officials and the municipal health department. Having a preventive maintenance program for all the equipment, making sure that safety equipment and accessories are always in stock, keeping a timetable to ensure rest breaks for employees during their shift, keeping appropriate signs at hand to caution guests and employees towards safety, 
The science may include caution signs like wet flow, labels for detergents and toxic material, safety instruction on equipment, etc. Thus, to reduce the safety risk, the housekeeper must be aware of the potential safety hazards, develop procedures to prevent accidents, develop ongoing safety training programs, and be aware of the laws that regulate the work environment. The Occupational Health and Safety Act also makes it mandatory for the employer to keep his space of work free from hazards that are likely to cause death or serious harm to the employees working. 78% of all accidents are caused by individuals failing to notice the obvious indications of accident possibility, in other words, carelessness. 98% of all these accidents can be prevented through proper training, supervision and employee vigilance. Different countries have developed their own standards on occupational health and safety management systems. India has published and follows the RASI 5001-2000 Indian standards on occupational health and safety management systems, specifications and guidance for use which is adapted to Indian needs. The main emphasis of the system is on classifying the work activities, identifying the hazards, determining the risk deciding if a given level of risk is tolerable, preparing risk control action plan and reviewing the adequacy of action plans. Now, we will see on what is security. Safe lodging and the reputation of a hotel are critical to ensure success for the hotel. These entities must properly provide for the protection and maintenance of assets. Hence, let us understand the different assets of a hotel and their threats. An asset is that which brings in profit or increases the value of the business. The revenue of the hotel is generated from the various services that have to be rendered by the employees and experienced by the guests. Like all businesses, physical assets need to be safeguarded. Assets can be classified as human assets, physical assets and intangible assets. Human asset includes customers, guests and employees. Physical asset includes land, building, infrastructure, equipment, inventory and cash. Intangible assets include goodwill and hotel reputation. Thus, the hotel should have a proper security system to protect the human beings, physical resources and intangible assets. There are two types of security threats hotels can be concerned with. Threats that might affect a guest's health, comfort or well-being and threats that affect the hotel directly, in particular its fixtures and fittings, its revenue and its reputation. Therefore, it is important for the hotel management to select reputable and reliable system which will provide protection against all such threats which will create problem for the hotel. Now, how do we prevent all these threats? It is by good security system. As we have already seen, Security refers to prevention of theft, fire and other emergencies. Types of security. Security can be classified as security of physical aspects, security of people and security of systems. Let us see one by one. Security of physical aspects. Physical aspects of security can further be divided into two parts. They are the internal security and the external security. Internal security includes security against theft using closed circuit camera and burglar's alarm, fire security by smoke detectors, fire alarm, water sprinklers and fire extinguishers, proper lighting of corridors, fire escape area basements and other areas, safeguarding the assets by proper inventory and regular physical checkups and keeping a track of unwanted guests entering the establishment. External security includes proper lighting of boundary and outside of the building, proper fencing of the building, fencing of pool area to avoid accidents at night, manning of service gates to restrict the entry, fixing of closed circuit TV cameras. Next is security aspects of people. This again can be divided into two parts, the staff and the guests. 
The recruitment and selection procedure of staff have to be done rigorously. References of previous employees to be checked and properly screened. Identity badges and distinct uniform can be issued for easy identification of staff. The issuance and return of room keys by the housekeeping staff should be properly recorded. Proper training to employees to note the unusual things, safety drills and firefighting skills should be conducted at regular intervals. Trash should be checked to see if employees are smuggling out things out of the hotel along with the trash. Employees and other vehicles should be checked at the time of going off duty to prevent theft of hotel property. From time to time, surprise checking of staff lockers should be done. Frequent stock checkings of inventory records of linen, stores and other items has to be done. Guests should be told to be careful about their properties. Employees should be asked to report about suspected persons like guests with scanty baggage and management should set an example to follow these rules and should encourage the employees to follow the same. Security aspects of guests. A guest suspected of taking away hotel property should be charged on the bill. Not many guests will protest if they are told that they are being charged for the souvenirs. Scanty baggage guests should be carefully watched. Rooms should not be opened for guests coming and saying that they have left their keys inside unless their identity is established. Employee should be instructed not to share information about guests to the outsiders. Any suspicious person roaming in the corridor must be immediately reported. Housekeeping staff should ensure never to leave keys lying exposed on unattended carts in the corridors. Security aspect of systems. Security aspect of systems in hotel is equally important. The objective of such security is to safeguard the assets of the hotel. Systems, procedures and the policies followed properly shall safeguard the assets and shall increase the lifespan of the equipment. Like, record all losses and missing items immediately. Inventory control should be proper. Auditing should be done on regular basis and proper system for cash receipts and disbursement should be created and followed. Thus, the measures to be followed by the management to prevent security threats are to provide resident card or identity card to the employees and insist them to use regularly at all times during work hours. Key control system should be employed and maintained. Housekeeper's occupancy report to be made regularly. Proper procedure of checking keys in rack should be followed. Double lock system, magic eye and a door chain system to be installed. Proper left luggage system should be maintained. Safety lockers for guest valuables should be provided. Smoke detectors should be installed. Modern and efficient firefighting system should be installed. Proper and regular maintenance of equipment, appliances and buildings should be carried out. Closed circuit camera at parking and other strategic areas in the hotel can be installed. Fire escape route must be designed and highlighted. Frequent patrolling by the security staff must be made. Security frisking or body check can be done for guests without offending them. Heavy drapes should be drawn during night on windows and exposed glass panels to cut out the external light. Computer and data processing security should be installed for safeguarding of computer information so that it does not reach the competitors and for protection against virus in the program. And if possible, a house detective can be employed. Thus, security is not the responsibility of any one person in the establishment. All staff should be security minded and report anything of a suspicious nature. Staff should realize the necessity of not giving information regarding internal matters to such persons as enquiry agents, newspaper reporters, etc. Training the personnel for safety and security measures is important to the hospitality industry in order to keep themselves, the guests and property safe and secure. This is because for everyone, life and their property is very, very precious. Thus, training should be an ongoing program in all the establishments to raise awareness on safety and security among employees. 
all heads of departments must ensure that their employees follow safe job procedures, correct the unsafe conditions immediately and take adequate time to do the job so that accidents are not caused due to haste. The housekeeping safety manual with the list of rules also has to be provided to all the employees. This type of systematic organization will help in providing satisfaction for the guest and employee and will give a feeling of safety like staying in their own house. It will also help to bring more benefits to the hotel by minimizing the labor turnover and increasing the customer turnover, thereby increasing the economy and status of the hotel. I believe by now you would have understood the importance of safety and security in a hospitality industry. Thank you very much for your patient listening.